Okay, great. So we will um, get started. So thank you again for coming this morning and I appreciate you making this part of your practice. Um, it occurred to me yesterday after a practice that I didn't even introduce myself. I was so excited to get in, started with the meditation practice. And I know that there's some of you that I've known for a while, but there's others that are new. So I just wanted to take a moment to introduce myself. So my name is Lisa Marie, and I live in Lexington, right outside of Boston, Massachusetts, with my two children. So I have an 11 year old and a 13 year old, a dog, and some chickens. So we've been in quarantine since about March 13th, and I remember that because that was the day that school had stopped. But I have been practicing yoga for over 20 years and have been teaching for about the last four or five. And I've been practicing meditation for about 10 years now. So um, spirituality has always been an important part of my life. So I remember really starting to read more about it, probably when I was in college and I've continued to do so. And I really feel like it's had a very profound effect on my life. Even, you know, my mom was saying the other night when I was kind of telling her what I was doing, she's like, you know, you really have become much more relaxed, you know, much more temperamental and anxious, I would say, probably in my teens and 20s. So once I started to get into my 30s, I think I realized that I kind of wanted to approach the world a little bit differently. And that's really when my practice deepened. So super excited that you guys are here and I get to share this with you because it's just, it's great for me to kind of dive a little bit deeper as well as I start to teach you guys. So that was my number one list, just to like on my outline of what I wanted to do yesterday and I completely forgot and we jumped right into it. So I did just want to take some time. So for the people who are new, that you guys had an idea of who I was. So yesterday we learned a little bit about the benefits of meditation as well as practice and awareness of breath meditation. And that's really the type of meditation that you would most read about when people talk about mindfulness. So that gives us an opportunity to observe our thoughts. And the more we do it, we start to see we don't have so much control over our thoughts. They come in and they come out. But what we do have control over is whether we engage in them or not. And that's really where we see the benefits of the practice. So we can be experiencing fear or we can be experiencing anger, but we don't have to add to the storyline. So again, we can, our mind, we can think of it as that clear blue sky and all of these different passing thoughts, those are clouds. We know that they're gonna pass. So we can kind of take a step back and we don't become our thoughts and feelings. We become the person who's watching them. So we become the observer. And as you practice more, you'll start to notice that it really does come in through your everyday life. Like, you know, if something happens with your partner or your kids, it gives a little bit more space between our triggers and reactions. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go into this week, just about how we have that space and those gaps. So that was really more of a mindfulness practice. And we're gonna go through some more meditation types throughout the week. But today we're gonna to practice loving kindness meditation. So rather than observe our thoughts, we're gonna be cultivating the feelings of love and compassion within us, and then we're gonna to try to send those outwards. But those also, this also has really good positive impacts for us, so it helps us to cultivate positive emotions like love, joy, and gratitude. And it also helps us suppress negative emotions that we may be feeling like anger, resentment, and anxiety. So it really does like create just a sense of well-being because we feel more connected with the world and with the people around us. So when we feel isolated, when we feel it's kind of like us versus them, that's when we can start to have negative emotions and anxiety can come up. But when we can cultivate love and compassion, it not only makes us feel better, but it really does have a positive effect on the whole world. And you might think, well, how am I influencing the whole world by meditation? And you influence it because when you start acting kinder towards others, so whether it's letting people cut you in line or calling up a neighbor or your family, it almost has a domino effect on the whole world. So by your kindness, you're inspiring other people to be kind as well too. Like Maya Angelou has a quote that I really love. It's, try to be a rainbow in someone's cloud. And it kind of really reminds us that we're all in this together. So as humans, we all want the same things in our life. We want to be happy. We want our families to be safe and healthy. And it just reminds us that even though we seem to be different on the outside, we actually have a lot more in common. So that's really what this meditation is doing. 
And there's actually, there was a study at Stanford that showed that even people who practiced a loving kindness meditation for seven minutes reported an improvement in their social interactions and in their relationships. So it's really a good practice. And it also, when we become less self-absorbed, we also just show more signs of happiness. So I think that there's a phrase like, you want to be unhappy? Think about yourself. You want to be happy? Think about others. So it just helps to broaden our perspective so we don't feel like we're so the sole focus. And personally, I know that's something I need as somebody who can tend to be a little bit self-absorbed sometimes, which then leads me into my next, you might have a preference for meditation. Like, so for example, we'll go through the loving kindness and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. But for me, it's easier. A mindful practice is much more preferable. Like I could prefer to sit there, investigate my own thoughts, you know, and come mindful. This practice doesn't come quite as easy to me, but it's something that I need to do. So even though, you know, one practice may come easier than the other, I really would encourage you guys to alternate them because if you're on any path of either personal growth or spiritual development, you know, the mindfulness practice provides us with the wisdom, that self-awareness, but the loving kindness practice provides us with the compassion and the kindness and the ability to see that we're all interconnected. And we're they're the two sides of the same coin. We really need both. We need that wisdom, but we also need that kindness and compassion. So I encourage you guys to continue to like explore both of them. So that's where I, my that's a little bit about loving kindness. But now we'll jump into the practice. And um, so to get started, well, again, we'll take a comfortable seat. And like I said, I know that there is different. Um, some people will say just get comfortable. I do feel that posture is important because how we carry our body really affects our energy. So if you want to, you know, sit up tall, shoulder stacked over hips, and you can be in a chair, but just being alert. And you can close your eyes and rest your palms in your lap. And you can just, we're going to take a moment though, before we start jumping in the love and kindness, just to arrive. So just to settle in. And often the best way we can do that is by starting to put our mind's focus on the breath. So you can just start to observe the breath. And the inhales and the exhales. And we're just gonna spend a moment here, just arriving, reconnecting with the body. And now I want you to bring to mind someone for whom it's very easy for you to love. So somebody where you have a very uncomplicated relationship with. So it might not be a romantic partner. Sometimes that can bring up either attachments or different emotions, but it could be. So somebody who is just very unconditional, easy for you to love. It could be a child or a parent or maybe even a pet. You can just bring that person or animal to mind. And picture them really happy. Like maybe they're doing something that they really enjoy doing. And you want them to be happy. And you start to see how that shows up in your body. Just really wishing them happiness and wellness. We know that if you could clear off all the roadblocks for them so they could have an easy, successful life, that you would do that. We're going to 
send this person a blessing. You can either say it out loud after me or silently to yourself, but picturing this person in mind whom you love so much. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe. And may you live with ease. And really putting all of your heart behind those words. And again, you can picture them being happy, healthy, living with ease. And picture them experiencing joy. I'm going to sit with this feeling for a moment. And since we know that all beings are equal, we're going to send these same blessings out to somebody that's more of a neutral person. So somebody whom we don't have either positive or negative emotions towards. Maybe it's somebody that you see at the grocer or somebody you pass on your commute, just somebody that you recognize but really don't feel anything towards. And whoever came to mind, that's it. You don't need to overthink it. You can just go with probably the first person that came to mind but you can picture them in your mind's eye. I'm picturing them happy and healthy and just having a good life. And maybe you start to as you wish them a good life, it starts to minimize your own self-concern because your energy is really focused on hoping that they are doing well. We're going to extend them the same blessing. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe, and may you live with ease. And just take a moment again, just seeing how that shows up in the body. And maybe even turn the corners of your lips up into a smile as you picture this person experiencing joy. You feel happy as well. Now we're going to send those blessings to someone whom maybe you have a more complicated relationship with or for whom it's not so easy for you to extend blessings to. So it could be somebody whom you argue with or it doesn't even have to be someone you know. It could be somebody that you know about. But someone whose feelings maybe you feel a little bit more negative towards. You can bring this person to mind. And again, because we know that all sentient beings, all humans, we all want the same things. We're going to extend the blessing to this person as well, too. Maybe you picture this person in your mind. You can picture them happy. If you're picturing them more at ease than you would generally consider doing. because you do want this person to be happy. Because maybe if this person felt safe and happy, they would be easier to get along with. May you be happy. May 
may you be healthy, may you be safe, and may you live with ease. And taking a moment to sit with that, like feeling that love, that goodwill going out towards someone who maybe you don't generally have those thoughts for. I'm not going to extend that blessing out to all sentient beings all over the planet. And I think this is just such a perfect time to do that as really the whole world is struggling with COVID-19 right now. It's literally been a global issue that we've all been able to get behind. So however you want to visualize that, we're gonna extend the blessing out to everyone. Everyone who might be scared or fearful, uncertain about what's next. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be safe. And may you live with ease. And really feeling that, imagine what a wonderful place that would be if people really did feel happy, healthy, safe, and at ease. And then you can place your hand right on your heart. You can place the right hand on the heart and the left hand on top of the right. And just feeling the heart. Now we're gonna extend that same blessing to ourselves because just like everyone else, we also deserve to be happy and healthy. So just taking a moment, just feeling the connection. Sometimes even just feeling the connection when our hands are touching our heart can give us a sense of comfort, of ease. And now we'll direct that blessing to ourselves. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be safe, and may I live with ease. And maybe just keep the hands on the heart for a moment. I'm just noticing what comes up. And bring your hands back to your lap. And when you're ready, you can start to slowly open your eyes, starting to come back. And so that was the loving kindness meditation. And you know, it may bring up different things for you. I know it can be challenging sometimes when we start to picture the person whom we have a more complicated relationship with. And I know there's sometimes there's meditations that just omit that part, but I did want to give you guys the full spectrum. And like I said, what different types of meditations are going to come easier for you, like the loving kindness generally isn't my go-to. I usually would do an awareness of breath, but again, if we're on this path of personal development or spiritual growth, we need both the wisdom and the kindness and compassion. So we do, it's important to integrate that into our practice as well.
And um, I did just want to read a quote too, um, the Dalai Lama, which I just thought was appropriate for this meditation. So he says, this is my simple religion. There is no need for temples, no need for complicated philosophy. Our own brain, our own heart is our temple. The philosophy is kindness. So I really, I really like that. And I wanted to share that today with you folks. And um, I will unmute you all now. So if there's any questions or anything you guys want to say about the meditation, 